Hey geeks and gamers, welcome to another editorial. This one I wanted to set up where you could actually see me. Uh, that way it makes this a little more personal. Uh, because my editorial series, which is the only second one I've done of these, is meant to be more of a conversation between you and me. You, the audience, and me, the me. Um, the last one I did was talking about that um, Llamasoft uh, thing that came out. Um, and why you should care about it. Uh, these are nice to do when I don't have a lot of time to work on bigger projects. And that's sort of where I'm at right now. I just started my new job. I'm going through like a bunch of... I have to do like a month of fucking training for this damn job. Uh, my ear itches. I have to do a month of training for this job. And uh, so at the moment, I don't really have a lot of time to work on uh, heavily edited videos. Um, I have some that I definitely want to do. I've been having a lot of fun this year making videos for this channel. So the editorials are a nice way for me to still put out some content and talk to you guys and discuss topics without really needing to put in a, uh, as much of the work as I do for the bigger videos. Today's topic is going to be Tom Clancy. Uh, Tom Clancy. Here's a book. This is a uh, this is Point of Contact. Uh, it is not written by Tom Clancy, but it is in the in the Tom Clancy universe. Uh, that's what's weird about Tom Clancy is that I'm not so much talking about the man himself, I'm talking about the, his, his world that he's created. Uh, this this is a Jack Ryan Jr. novel. I'm gonna put that down. Um, today we're not talking about the author or his books, but we're talking about something that you and I are more familiar with, and I'm gonna be tra showing some trailers. They're unrelated trailers. They're just so something to have on in the background. We're talking about Tom Clancy video games. Uh, the title of this uh, editorial is, I like Tom Clancy games, but I don't respect them. Now, what the hell does that even mean, Alex? What the hell does that mean? What do you mean you don't respect? You like them, but you don't respect them. Well, my history with the Tom Clancy um, video game brand by Ubisoft, that brand, runs pretty deep. Um, back in the day... I played the original Ghost Recon on the PlayStation 2. Uh, it was a game that my dad bought uh, because he thought it would be, you know, a good military game. And that's something he was interested in. And, you know, being a kid, having a PlayStation 2 as my primary console at the time, that was that. That's, that's, I played what I had. And he bought Ghost Recons. So you damn well bet I played Ghost Recon. At the time, it was uh, unlike anything else I had played. Um, I'm sure the closest thing I probably would have played at that point, Goldeneye for the N64 maybe, as like a shooter. But even then, Ghost Recon is a very different type of game. The original Ghost Recon is um, a very tactical first-person military game. One-shot kills. There's no regenerating health. There's no health pickups. You, somebody shoots and they're dead. Like that's it's. It was all based on realism. Um, which is a common theme that I'll, I'll be discussing here. It was it was all based on, on on realism, and I found that to be very interesting and refreshing um, as a kid. And I played the first Ghost Recon, and I played Jungle Strike, which was like an expansion that they released um, at the time. And um, then I remember going over to a friend's house. He had an original Xbox, and uh, we played um, a game that very new to me at the time that was splinter cell chaos theory which is my god splinter cell chaos theory is like one of the greatest greatest stealth games of all time if if you like stealth games and you haven't played chaos theory please play it um and that got me super interested we we played the co-op mode originally and that got me super interested in splinter cell and I would go on to explore the two previous games and then all the games that would come out after that. Um, so I was super into Ghost Recon, super into, into Splinter Cell. I kept up with the releases. I played the games. Um, the other third main pillar at the time, Rainbow Six, um, I didn't get into that early, but I did get into it around the time I started collecting uh, Dreamcast. I, I picked up, uh, and I still have it, the original um, Rainbow Six and also Rogue Spear, the uh, expansion, um, and played those, and they were also very, like, kind of like Ghost Recon, very tactical um, games, but where Ghost Recon was more out outdoorsy and um, was more like, you know, split-second decisions, uh, so Rainbow Six was more, like, you planned ahead, and it was all tactical. Um, and 
there was a there was a point in my life, and I got thinking about this recently because uh, we just um, it's still airing all the all the episodes for Halo Month over on the Butt Mappers are are airing right now, but we just got done um, recording wise with all of the stuff for Halo Month minus like a live episode. We still have a live episode to do this month, um, and I've been going back and exploring some other stuff that I haven't thought about in a while. One of them being Tom Clancy. Because at one point in my life, Tom Clancy would have... Like, that, the world of Tom Clancy and the different franchises under that umbrella would have been considered um, one of my favorite gaming franchises. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking PS3 360 generation. Um, games like the uh, Advanced Warfighter, a, a, a Ghost Recon games, um, Splinter Cell Conviction, Double Agent, and Blacklist... Uh, Rainbow Six Vegas and Vegas 2 and my god Ghost Recon Future Soldier that's probably my favorite Ghost, uh, Tom Clancy game is Ghost Recon Future Soldier I was so excited for Ghost Recon Future Soldier I had that game pre-ordered I, pr I pre-ordered that game and then I had my my dad pick up that my copy after he got off work one day because you know I was still like a teenager I was in high school so yeah I was oh man I was oh yeah and Ghost Recon Shadow War for the 3DS is one that I got early on which is a really good tactical uh i struggle to call it an rpg but kind of like an, an advanced war style game um but for 3ds i was super into the tom clancy um games and experiences i played a few other ones i played end war which was like uh a tactical game where you used uh, the, the xbox headset to like command your troops very interesting and hawks which were like flight sim games um and then something happened and this is kind of where I'm, I'm going to be getting into the topic. And we've been watching the uh, trailer for Wildlands, Ghost Recon Wildlands. And, other, and that's a good place to start. Um, it all started to me... Actually, it didn't all start here, but this is where I'll, I'll start the story. Ghost Recon Wildlands, the trailer we just saw. Not this. I don't know what this is. I'm going to skip this. Uh, the trailer we watched for Ghost Recon Wildlands was the trailer that I was... I saw it, whatever E3 that was, and I was so excited for it. Um, huge Ghost Recon fan, very excited for it, and that game was a letdown for me. And that's really where this, the ball starts rolling, and uh, I'll get into that uh, a little later. Um, also, after um, or around the time of Ghost Recon Future Soldier there and, and, and Splinter Cell Blacklist, which was the last Splinter Cell, by the way, um, there was a trailer for Rainbow Six Patriots. Which was supposed to be like this really ultra realistic Rainbow Six experience where it's like story driven and um, you can you see the the story from the side of the Rainbow operatives and also the terrorists and it's supposed to be all um, like choice uh, you know like cho your choices matter and I, I, there's a trailer in here somewhere for it you'll you'll see the trailer um, I was super excited for that game when that trailer dropped and then it got canceled and sort of from there was my shift in the Tom Clancy brand um, something that really struck me as interesting whenever I was younger and why I think I was so invested in the Tom Clancy brand at one point was the fact that the Tom Clancy name and its games were always based in realism Alex what the hell are you talking about you uh you 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 you, you babble on about Earth Defense Force and, and no more heroes and and Yoko Taro games. What the fuck do you care about realism? Well, when it comes to Tom Clancy, the games, that was sort of the hook. It was, you know, there's so many other war games that portrayed war in a, a, a light that was more fun or more um, competitive or do bro, you know. Uh, they can call duty around that time, Battlefield, those, those kind of games. The Tom Clancy IPs always treated military and war realistically and kind of respectfully um and that was that was the hook to me was that was the hook was that like when you're playing one of those experiences you could tell that the team behind it really wanted to make like the most realistic experience they could think of for that genre um and i absolutely loved that we saw a shift after the cancellation of that Rainbow Six Patriots game and Splinter Cell Blacklist came out, which was, like I said, the last Splinter Cell. Um, here's a display commercial if you want to buy some Starfield displays. Did anybody like that game? I don't think anybody did. Um, 
Th this is the Patriots trailer, so you'll get to see what I'm talking about here. This was the trailer I was I was initially very, very excited for. So Patriots got canceled, and in its place came, and we'll get Rainbow Six out of the way first because it's the franchise I probably care the least about. In its wake rose Rainbow Six Siege. Now, if you agree or disagree with me on the upcoming games I'm going to talk about, perfectly fine. I don't think any of them are bad games. But Rainbow Six Siege, going from what was promised here as um, a, some sort of realistic uh, military experience with some great storytelling, to Rainbow Six Siege, which is a strictly multiplayer experience, wasn't appealing to me. And I've played Siege since this time, and I can recognize the value of Siege. I don't play a lot of multiplayer games. It is a damn good game. I mean, you, you do have to use tactics with your teammates and stuff in order to take down the other teams and stuff. It is a cool game, but it's not what I wanted from another Rainbow Six. And then after Siege, what I think is probably the dumbest entry in any Tom Clancy franchise, Rainbow Six Extraction came out. You can hear me and Axel Wolf talk about that. There's a video on the channel where we, we played some of it when it came to Game Pass and talked about it. Um, why it's the dumbest was because, again, it seemed like Tom, the, the Tom Clancy brand prided itself on, on realism. And then uh, there's a Rainbow Six game now, Extraction, that's about aliens. So, yeah, uh, Tom Clancy's probably <laughs> rolling in his grave thanks to that one. Um, so, yeah, Rainbow Six just didn't go where I wanted it to. I was not interested, but again... Rainbow Six was never my favorite, so fine. You know, Patriots look cool. It's sad that he got canceled, but fine. Fine, fine, fine. Splinter Cell didn't go anywhere past uh, Blacklist. Um, I did like all of the games up to Blacklist, all, all six, seven, if, if you're counting both versions of Double Agent. And uh, they're all good games in, the, in their own right. They get a little action-y around Conviction and Blacklist, a little action movie-ish. Um, but they were still fun, and they still had great stealth elements, and and they were good games. Um, gone. We, have, we haven't seen a Splinter Cell since Blacklist in 2013, so yeah, it's been a little over 10 years now. And uh, I know there's rumors of, of them working on a Splinter Cell uh, remake, but uh, until I see proof, until I see some sort of a trailer or something, I don't, I don't buy it. Um, so we'll see. The big one, Ghost Recon. Let's get back to Wildlands. Ghost Recon, Future Soldier was like my favorite. I love that game so much. I played some of it recently. Uh, just again, because I've been kind of feeling nostalgic for that era of uh, games. And again, Tom Clancy was a big one for me. So Ghost Recon, Future Soldier, love that game. Fantastic stealth game. Fantastic action game too. Um, it just felt really good to play. I, I love that game so much. Great campaign. Um, Wildlands trailer came out very narrative heavy they introduced an open world and they were like and you could be tactical with your friends up to four players open world tactical experience cool cool so cool um, and I got the game and it's probably one of my biggest letdowns of all time and I do want to say that I've gone back and I've played Ghost Recon Wildlands I'm actually playing some of it now and I've also played Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And I can recognize they are really well put together fun games. But they're not what I think Ghost Recon needed. I don't think Ghost, Ghost Recon needs the level of freedom that Wildlands had. And um, that's something you may agree or disagree with me on. But um, my, my issue with Wildlands when I started playing it was it just felt like another one of the Ubisoft open world games... Uh, but with some stealth and tactical elements to it, uh, which were good. But the problem was that it, it, it felt like I was being rewarded for for not taking the game seriously. Like I could, you know, if there's a mission where I have to sneak in and steal some information or rescue a hostage or something, I could take a helicopter and crash it into the fucking area, take out, shoot everybody on site, and I, I win. And yeah, it's fun, but it felt like I should I should be punished for that. It's like that's something that like wouldn't fly in the original Tom Clancy titles, um, and that was sort of my my thing with Wildlands. Why I found it to be disappointing was that 
the the game was too lax to me with with with, with all of that. And well, like I've said, I've gone back. I do like the games. I think they are good. I just don't respect them. And when it comes to um, the other one, The Division, which is uh, currently, um, I think they're making The Division 3 or something. And I'm, I know they're also working on another Ghost Recon game. I'm curious to see if it'll be open world again. But um, Tom Clancy, The Division, I never played those two. I have nothing to say about them. Um, they look like looter shooters, like Destiny. Um, and those just aren't my scene. Maybe they're good. Maybe they're not. I have Nobody ever talks to me about them. So I don't know. I don't know about those two games. Uh, maybe at some point I'll, I'll, I'll try one. I don't, I don't know. I, I imagine The Division 2 is is still active um, if I had to pick one of the two. But if you like those and there's a reason for me to check them out, let me know in the comments. But just know I'm, I'm not into grindy looter shooters. So uh, no thanks uh, if, 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 if that's the case. So yeah, it seemed like all of a sudden there was a shift. Um, and, and the Tom Clancy brand uh, that happened. And, you know, it was probably for the good in terms of uh, the marketability and profits for Ubisoft. I, I understand that. I imagine Rainbow Six Siege did great for the company. Uh, same thing with Wildlands and Breakpoint. Um, and I don't know about The Division again. Here's a trailer for The Division. I haven't played this. Um, yeah, I imagine that... The newer games probably have done great for the company, and that's probably why they've kept it in this direction. But I just can't respect them because it feels like they take themselves less less seriously than the older games, and um, that's something that I miss was the the feeling of those older Tom Clancy games, um, the feeling of having some really down to earth games that made you think instead of just you know react and shoot. And uh, really uh, were hard. They were hard games at points, but they were really rewarding and fun. And uh, I don't really have that anymore. I, I mean, I, again, I'll I usually like to check out or see what's up with the new Tom Clancy products and games and stuff. And you know, I I, I, I read some of the books and there's that like Jack Ryan TV series and stuff. Like I've kept up with it. You know, the guy's been dead since what 2013 or something, but I've kept up with it. Um, I'm just, I just can't respect the, the game franchise. I like them. I can't respect them. Uh, <laughs> if that makes sense. Interesting concept. The idea of not being able to respect something you like. Um, is there something like that for you? Do you have a game franchise or anything that for some reason you just can't respect it like you used to be able to? You, maybe you like it, but you just can't respect it anymore. Um, that's sort of an interesting concept that I've never really thought about till now. But that's sort of how I, I've been feeling, revisiting some of the Tom Clancy stuff, um, thinking about it. None of my friends talk about Tom Clancy. Not, nobody I know talk about I mean, again, I, my friends on the button mappers and then real life and me in general, I talk about Atari and, you know, Earth Defense Force and shit all day. Um, so, yeah. Oh, man, here's a trailer for the original Ghost Recon. How nostalgic. This was the game that started it all for me. Important game. Um... Yeah. Just let me know in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. And again, uh, if you don't agree with what I've had to say about Tom Clancy games, you don't have to. <laughs> let me know. Let me know how wrong I am. Let me know why uh, The Division is the greatest game of all time or something. You know? Um, man, I miss these old ass trailers. I feel like there's a lot of people that, um, especially a lot of older people, that like. I'll talk about a game for the... I think my buddy Brian. I talk about a game for the 360. And they're like, oh man, I don't play a lot of those new games. Gaming has changed so much, even from that point, you know? So, I think the Tom Clancy franchise is, is like one of the most evident, like evident part of that. The Tom Clancy games coming out during the Xbox and Xbox 360 era. And the Tom Clancy games coming out now, vastly different. Very different. So, Thanks for listening to me rant. In this editorial, these are fun to do. Sort of just sit down and chat, me and you. Really, I'm chatting, you're listening. But you can respond in the comments. In the comments. Let me know what you thought. What's your favorite Tom Clancy game? Do you care at all? You might not. You probably don't. Um, but I do. So, yeah. Thanks. See you guys later.